Yo, Joes. Greetings, agents of Cobra Command and Bar Weep Grana Weep Ninny Balm Cybertronians. My name is Steve, and I'm here to talk a little bit about something that's got me really jazzed. It's the Megatron Baroness G.I. Joe Transformers mashup. Recently announced at the Hasbro G.I. Joe 40th Anniversary live stream on 24th of February 2022. We did a recent podcast dealing with the new reveals and a lot of the classified stuff, and I was pretty enthusiastic about the Hiss Tank. But for those of you not prepared to trudge through a two-hour podcast, and I don't blame you, here are my observations in brief. Right off the bat, I just want to say that I'm absolutely astonished it has taken them this long to do something like this. There have been various collaborations between Transformers and G.I. Joe in recent memory, and they're all non-transformable lip service, getting the broad strokes of a G1 Transformers aesthetics and colouring and stickering and overlaying them onto an existing G.I. Joe vehicle. There might be some great pack-ins, but none of these vehicles transform, and a Transformer that doesn't transform is kind of analogous to a G.I. Joe that doesn't articulate. So here we finally have it. And it couldn't be a more immaculate choice. The Hiss Tank looks great with Baroness. I think we can all agree that it would have been a bit anticlimactic if we got a Hiss Driver. And Megatron. Oh, Megatron. It's funny, I've never been in the kind of Cobra baddie camp of things, personally. But when it comes to Transformers, I'm definitely Team Purple. And Megatron is just... a awesome character. Seeing him here as their opening gambit for these Transformers mashups is sublime. And I couldn't be happier about that. But, let it be said, and those of you with keen eyes probably see this coming, this is not a masterpiece level Transformer. There is a lot of parts forming. In fact, the entire back end becomes a shield, and the front end of the Hiss is a very unwieldy backpack, which makes old Megs pretty back-heavy and pretty light-footed. His legs are hollow in a number of places, and the feet are particularly empty and filled with negative space. So much so that during the live stream when they were posing him, shortly after I took this screen grab to illustrate how big the overhang of the backpack is, this is what happened. Yep, she fell backwards. This toy is going to be a challenge to pose, even if the joints are super tight. It's going to be back heavy. Mercifully though, you can remove the turret. But where's the fun in that? You want a G.I. Joe, or in this case, a Cobra figurine, to be able to ride the back of Megatron. <laughs> like a giant mechanical steed with double Diablo cannons. The fusion gun is also an example of the hollowness, but once again I need to reiterate the fact that this is not a masterpiece level transformer, and part of me applauds that. It is not going to be difficult to transform, it's going to be fun. Something that you can convert from his tank to robot mode to his tank to robot mode ad infinitum and not frustrate yourself. It's going to expand the play pattern of your G.I. Joe enjoyment beyond just placing a figure in a vehicle. Now you add the transformation to that dimension and you can see why Transformers fans are as enthusiastic as they are about their toy line. It's an action figure, it's a vehicle, and it's also a puzzle toy. The engineering is pretty good. Apart from the shell forming and parts forming, we see a very clean interior robot flanked by his tank parts, but the true centerpiece mode has got to be the very seamless his tank. The design is devilishly clever in that it takes into account the panel lines and sutures that the original his tank possesses naturally and of its own accord. So what we see here is a fold that actually exists on the his tank, and Megatron makes full use of it. So there are very few additional new panel lines. In fact, the only one that really stands out to me are these two additional lines on either side of the cockpit. Everything else looks pretty seamless. And another thing that's seamless, all the details that were once brought in using stickers are now paint operations. These are printed onto the toy. And that 
gives my OCD great joy. Because they will be perfect, they will be clean, <laughs> and I won't have to be the one agonizing over doing them correctly. I used to enjoy putting stickers on vehicles. Now I'm terrified I'm going to screw them up. It's a function of age, isn't it? It has the same dimensions and silhouette as a regular His tank, and yet it packs a transformable robot inside. You see sneak peeks of it in the front of the treads and round the back. But to be honest, that negative space never really formed part of the vehicle's functional area anyway. So seeing it grayed out almost gives it a more detailed approach. It gives it more vehicular qualities than the original His tank. I love the fact that they retain the tow hitch. That is some impressive attention to detail, except this time when you transform it into Megatron, it will remain on his abdomen, which is an interesting little quirk, but I'm not going to complain. The Megatron details are there. All the signifiers of his cartoon appearance are great, and the head sculpt is particularly good. I love how this seems like the perfect complementary Megatron mold to the O-Ring G.I. Joe counterparts that he's meant to interact with. It feels right. It's articulated, so it's not quite a G1 style transformer, but it still has that toyetic property and cartoon-like property. In spite of the shortcomings, I am thrilled about this toy. And January of 2023 could not come soon enough. Or maybe it will come a little sooner. Who's to say? Oh, and a quick note about the presentation. The double slipcase sleeve is immaculate. Great thinking on Hasbro's part there. I love the artwork. Both the G1 inspired artwork on the left for Megatron and the very Hector Garrido painterly and explosion background G.I. Joe artwork on the right. They both look like real eye candy and I can't wait to pour over the details. But one detail you might have missed, unless you'd freeze framed the live stream, is this little blurb on the back of the inner box. Surveillance has detected spies scouting Cobra Base. Unauthorized vehicle is identified as Subject B. Be prepared to intercept. Their sting is sharp, but we are poised to strike. <laughs> that should give you a hint that this line is here to stay. Yojo. And let's roll out.